If you watched my last video, you'll know that I made a 34 key split ergo keyboard called the Ferris Sweep. The microcontroller that controls this keyboard is called the Nice Nano and uses a firmware called ZMK to create key maps. In this video, I'll show you how to install ZMK and modify it to create your own key maps. With that out of the way, let's get right into it. To start, this is the ZMK website, which has all of the documentation you'll need to modify your key map. If we go over to docs and then to installing ZMK, you see that you'll need a working GitHub account and a computer with Git installed. Start by creating a new GitHub repository. You can name it whatever you like. After making your repository, go back to the ZMK documentation, copy this line, and then run it in your terminal. Once you run it, you'll get a list of all of the keyboards that uh, ZMK supports. You want to enter the number that's associated with your keyboard. So in my case, I'm building it for the Ferris Sweep, which is right here. So I'll enter in 14 and then press enter. I'm also using nice nano V2s, so I'll select four. Say yes. Here we will link our GitHub to this repository, so we will have to enter in our GitHub username and password. We'll also have to enter in the name of the repository that we uh, set up already. This is right, so you can just press enter. Yes, you want to continue. And now, if you look here, the default files are in the repository. One of the nice things about ZMK is that it's all compiled using GitHub Actions. So if I go over to this Actions tab, you can see that the firmware is currently building. After a few minutes, these jobs complete and you can download the firmware right here. Once I have it downloaded, I can extract it. And then inside this folder, I have the left and the right firmware. To flash the firmware, all I have to do is plug it in, reset the controller, and it'll show up as a USB device on my computer. Then I just need to drag and drop the firmware file onto the USB device, and it'll flash the firmware. Now that we made our repository, I opened it up on Visual Studio Code so that we can edit the key map. So the basic layout of this key map uh, starts with any of the includes. These import statements allow extra functionality within your key map. This behavior one, for example, uh, allows for extra behaviors such as hold tap, mod tap, sticky keys, etc. This one provides all the key information and this one gives extra Bluetooth functionality. Next, these define statements allow you to define functions and also let you define variables that can be used within the key map. Within the curly braces are the bulk of the key map. Within these curly braces, there are many subsections that all correspond to a different functionality. This one, for example, controls all the behaviors. This one has the conditional layers. You can also have combos and macros and other subsections, most of which you can copy and paste directly from the docs. Such as right here, if you want some combos, you can just copy and paste this right on this line, and then you'll be able to create your own combos. Finally, the key map is where most of the editing will be done. Inside this key map section, you have all of the layers that you need. Each of the layers will be titled with a subsection, uh, such as default layer, right layer, left layer, uh, and try layer. But when we actually want to reference these layers, we will just be using uh, zero indexed numbers. So this is the zeroth layer, this is the first one, this is the second one, and etc. When we want to switch the layers using one of our keys, we will just be indexing it using this. In the ZMK docs, under behaviors and layers, we can see a lot of the information about how to use layers. Using these defines, we can replace these zero indexed um, numbers with actual names. So instead of using 
0, 1, 2, we can use default lower raise. To see what that would look like in our actual key map, we can use these define statements like this and define 0 as default, 1 is right, 2 is left, 3 is try. And then we can replace these numbers with actual names. So if I want to switch to the first layer, that means I'm switching to the right layer. If I'm switching to the second one, that means left. And then right here, I can say if layers uh, right and left, then layer try. We'll get into what these conditional layers are in a bit. Next, there's many different tags to enable different functionalities of layer switching. So for example, if I have ampersand MO lower, what that will do is when I'm holding down that key, it'll switch to the lower layer, which I defined right here as the first layer. I can also use layer tap functionality, which will basically switch to a layer if I hold down a key, but if I just tap the key, it'll do something else. You can see that right here in our key map, where if we tap the key, it'll backspace, but if we hold it, then it'll go to the right layer, which is this one. And right here, if we tap it, it'll uh, press tab, and then if we hold it, it'll go to the left layer. We also have other functionality, such as two, which will just go straight to another layer and disable all the other layers. And then this one, which just toggles a layer. So if I press this key once, then it'll toggle on the lower layer. And if I press it again, then it'll untoggle the lower layer. This is a pretty good representation of how layers work in ZMK. They're basically stacked on top of each other. If I enable this layer too, then all these other layers will be uh, hidden. But for example, if I don't have a key press right here, then the layer underneath will be visible and that key will be uh, the one that gets pressed. To press a key in ZMK, we use this KP tag, which just uses ampersand KP. We then use a space and then the key code that we want to actually press. We can find these key codes in this code section inside the ZMK docs. If we press full list, then it gives you an entire list of all the names we can use to press any key in the key map. This MT tag can also be used if you want to uh, press one key, like D, when the key is tapped. But then if it's held, you hold a modifier key, like left shift or left control. These modifier key codes are also in this full list of uh, key codes. This trans tag is just transparent, so that means that the key is transparent within that layer, meaning that the corresponding key in the uh, next visible layer will be pressed. So for example, if I enable this right layer from the default layer, and I try to press this key right here, then uh, since it's transparent, then it'll just press comma. One thing that kind of confused me at first was the spacing in this key map file. I thought that each entry had to be a certain distance away from each other, but actually you just need the same number of these tags as keys on your keyboards per layer. So my keyboard, which is the Ferris Sweep, has uh, 34 keys. So each one of these layers has to have 34 uh, individual tags. Just like Java and C++, these double slashes uh, comment out the lines. So none of this is actually part of the key map. It's just for extra readability. Conditional layers can be used to enable a certain layer if a certain set of other layers are also enabled. In this key map right here, we enable the try layer if the left and right layer are also enabled. That way, if this key and this key are held down at the same time, then we switch to this layer. There are a lot of other tags that you can use for other functionality, and they're all on this ZMK docs. So you may want to look over that before you start editing the key map in case there's a certain function that you would like. Within the key map, you can use certain keys for Bluetooth control using this uh, ampersand BT tag. These three keys within the try layer will select the Bluetooth device you want to connect to. So then you can connect three devices at a time. You can set up to five in ZMK. 
You can also use Bluetooth Clear to clear one of these entries so that you can reconnect a different device to one of these uh, profiles. You can also use Bluetooth Next and Previous if you want. Using this ampersand out tag, you can also either toggle between USB and Bluetooth, switch to Bluetooth, or switch to USB. That's one of the nice things about ZMK because you can use uh, wired or Bluetooth modes. Finally, you can also use functions with ZMK like this. So this is defining this HRMR function, which takes in four different keys. You can see how this function is defined up here. It uses this hold tap behavior, which is similar to mod tap, where if you hold something down, then it goes to a mod key. And if you tap it, then it just uh, taps the key. So right here, we take in four keys that we would like to tap. In this case, we have a J, K, L, and the single quote, which is S, Q, T. And then we say, uh, for the first key, hold tap with uh, right GUI, which is just the uh, command key on Windows or the Windows key on Windows. Uh, and then the second key will be the right control or the second key, which in this case is K, right? And then the third key, we will hold tap with uh, right alt. Uh, and our third key is L. And then for our fourth key, we'll hold tap with right shift. If you've looked around at key maps before, you'll probably recognize this functionality as home row mods, uh, which is why it's called HRM, home row mod. You can also just use this HT tag within the key map on each one of these JKL and single quote, but using these functions makes it a little bit cleaner. What I've said is probably enough to get you started, but there's a ton of other functionality within ZMK. Pretty much everything about ZMK is within these docs, so these docs should be your main resource. Hopefully I made it a little bit less overwhelming though. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. If you liked the video or found it helpful, please leave a like or subscribe to my channel. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.